So there are going to be changes to superannuation. And politicians wonder why people don't trust you them. You picked it. I didn't need to be Nostradamus to see this one coming. Well, he's going after nest eggs that are worth more than $3 million, so not ours. <laughs> no. The Albanese government has just confirmed a pretty significant alteration to Australia's retirement system. People with balances over $3 million will now pay 30% tax up from 15, like the rest of us. We need to make sure that our superannuation system is equitable and that it's sustainable. Jim Chalmers made the announcement 42 hours after Anthony Albanese denied having any such plan. We have no intention of making any major changes on superannuation. That pledge for no major change came nine months after he said he would make absolutely no change, major or minor. said we have no intention of making any super changes. He'll no doubt justify his decision by saying it was a minor election promise. I most certainly am not! Therefore his nose will grow only a minor bit. It looks like you most certainly am all. I am not! And at any rate, people with three mil in the bank don't vote Labor, so who cares what they think? Man, talk about rich people problems. It's all a bit... Core promise versus non-core promise. Remember that? Yeah, John Howard tied himself in knots. It was about 1996. He told John Laws that all election promises weren't equal. You don't have to go back that far to find examples of politicians lying to our faces. No cuts to the ABC or SBS. And then he did this. There will be no carbon tax under the government I lead. And then she did this. Mr McGowan, if you do get total control, will you ram through legislation to reform upper house voting that currently favours regions over the city? It's not on our agenda. And then he did this. You know the old saying, how to tell when a politician's lying? The lips are moving. <laughs> the federal government's contortions came as State Health Minister Amber Jade Sanderson tied herself in knots over the issue of hospital resuscitation units. A dedicated resus team, a handful of doctors and nurses whose primary role is being ready to perform resuscitations as needed, was a recommendation of the inquest into Ashwarya Aiswath. On Friday, Amber Jade was adamant that said team was in place and in operation. Yes, there is a supernumerary des designated resuscitation team in the emergency department. Those positions are full and it is clear on the roster who those resuscitation team members are on every roster. She'd been assured of this by the Child and Adolescent Health Services Board, which oversees the Department of Child and Adolescent Health Services, which oversees neonatology, community health, child and adolescent mental health services and Perth Children's Hospital. Who says there's too much red tape in government? On Monday, less than 72 hours after AG promoted the good work of her dedicated squad, the chair of the CAHS board, Rosanna Capalinga, went on radio to say that members of the resus team were actually still part of the general roster. Not a dedicated unit. No. I was surprised to hear that. So were we. It was news that no doubt made the normally unflappable Amber Jade feel like this. <laughs> oh, I can, oh, OK. And start wondering whether she might need a resuscitation unit for her political career. How could this happen? Sanderson blamed something called an information gap. Where exactly was the information gap? Between her ears. <laughs> AJ's all over the place on this one. This is her in Parliament in September. I cannot see anywhere a commitment that says, des uh, that says dedicated. Back then she was denying that the dedicated resource unit she subsequently and incorrectly told us was in place was even a recommendation in the first place, even though it clearly was. She's now saying CAHS Chief Executive Valerie Jovanovic has issued an urgent directive that the team is taken off general duties. Amber Jade and Department of Health Director General David Russell Weiss have both said they are disappointed with the Child and Adolescent Health Services Board but believe it's still doing an OK job. There aren't enough doctors and nurses to fill normal positions, so... So how are they going to staff a dedicated resus team on top of everything else? Here's an idea. How about instead of having a chief executive of a child and adolescent health services board, a chair of a child and adolescent health services board, a director general of a department of health and a health minister, we actually employ some people who look after sick children. I'd say burn it down and start again, but that's a little close to home. I'm Ben Harvey. Just fix the shit. For more up late, Click the subscribe button below.